you know, I, you know, sometimes you'll get might get bored with it, and, it, and I don't know, it just don't stop me. I just. <laughs> 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 but anyway, and my mom, and, and, and when she was alive, she inspired most of my songs because she lived with me, you know, by me and Bob. And, and I tell you, if you've got a good husband, the one God sent for you, you're blessed, ladies. You're blessed. And my, my uh, husband and Bob took care of my mama just as good as I did. And can't say that about a lot of men. Yeah, yeah. Just, I think I'll keep him a while. He's getting old. I don't know. I'll have to trade him in. Mama <laughs> <laughs> oh. said I, I wouldn't take a war pension for him. Anyway, she told me one day we were talking about Bubba. Uh, our son, and he was oh Lord, he was always into something. He, he was the sweetest little boy. He'd give you the shirt off his back, do anything for you. Never gave me a minute's trouble. So he got in kindergarten, and that was it. <laughs> 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 uh, but anyway, uh, <clears throat> at this this time he had left home, and the next morning after he left home, I wrote one scarred hand. And so uh, when you give something to the Lord and you really give it to him, there's a peace comes over you. Yes, there's a relief yes. comes over you. Yes. And I did. And I did, never did pray for Bubba anymore. All I did was thank God for what he was doing Amen. that day and every day. Amen. And that's what he was doing. So when he come home, a little over four years later, it was a wonderful homecoming. I hadn't seen him in all those years, but I, I knew he was safe. Why should I keep worried about him when I laid him in hands far more able to care for him? Yeah, yeah, and, uh, hey, I had talked to him all those years. I prayed by his bed. I read the whole book of Proverbs uh, set by his bed, verse two at uh, uh, night. And exactly what uh, Solomon told us not to do, that just gave me a roadmap. This is what I want to do. And that's what he did. So when he came home, I was so anxious to hear why he came. Because, you know, I wanted to know. But you know, I learned a valuable lesson when he left home. I knew, and he told me, Ma, he said, the night he left, he said, Mom, I can't handle you anymore, and I can't handle your preaching at me. Now I'm going to leave, and I'm going to live my own life. And so I knew right then that I had talked too much, and mothers will do that. But if they reach a certain point, you've told them everything you can tell them, and you become a broken record. Yeah. You're saying the same thing over and over, and it's not doing any good. So please, I was telling myself, shut up. You can't, there's a time when you've got teenagers that you can't talk unless it's inspired by the Holy Ghost. You only talk then, and so for two years, I did not ask him why, because boys don't like to talk to, her, to their mother. So anyway, when he'd been gone, he'd been home two years, and he and I were in the car together. It was so strange. We're never just he and I in the car, and I was driving. That was even stranger, because I scared him to death. And uh, he said, Mom, every time I get in the car with you, I know I'm going to see Jesus just in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but he did. He let me drive. And so we had been driving just a mile or two, and he said, Mama. And I knew by the way that he said, Mama, he was going to say something. So I got real still. I said, Yes. Just as quietly as I could. And he said, uh, You know, all those years, I was gone, and I said, well, I may really remember him. <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, I guess you wondered why I came home. And I said, well, I know you got right with the Lord. And he said, well, you know why I got right? And I said, no. And I just waited, and he started telling me. He said, I was living in a little old apartment. He said, I would sure hate for you and Daddy to see where I was trying to live. And I was trying to work at a gas station. But he said I was drinking a lot of the, uh, liquor, hard liquor and dope and all of this. And he, got, he said I got sick. He's got bad allergies anyway. And he said that, that I woke up one morning and I, the bed was wet 
where I just kept having this fever. And I was going to call the gas station, tell them I couldn't come in to work and I couldn't get up. My body wouldn't move. So he said, I rolled myself out on the floor and I crawled to the couch and I covered up with whatever was there, sweaters, jackets, or whatever. But he said, I couldn't lift the phone. I, could, I just couldn't. I, I, I was physically unable. He said, I don't know how long I'll leave there. But he said, all of a sudden, I heard voices. And I said, what kind of voices? He said, well, it was all women. I said, really? And he said, I don't know what they were saying. But he said, you know, Mama, when people go to the altar and everybody prays at the same time, you know, you, he said, that's what it sounded like, just a chorus of prayers. And it was all women. I said, really? He said, just before they started, he said, I told the Lord to take me home because I had been saved and I, I wanted to be forgiven because I couldn't stand that guilt anymore. It wasn't the sickness and it wasn't it wasn't the liquor. It wasn't none of that that was killing me. It was the guilt. And I made it right. And he said, take me home now and get my mama out of this and give her some peace. And so he said, I started hearing those voices. And he said, I looked at my watch, it was after 10 o'clock, it wasn't people going to church, I mean, they're going to work in the uh, apartment. But he said, they stopped at my door. They stopped at my door, and they grew silent. I said, who do you think that was? He said, I don't know, Mama, but I know what happened to me when they came to my door. Let me tell you something, ladies. Everywhere I went for years and years, I'd go to that altar. I don't care where I was. I don't care if it was a First Baptist church. I would squall into the altar. It didn't bother me. Honey, they weren't going to save my boy. They weren't going to go down there and down the pit and was in and left him out. But I had to get to one that was yeah. And so I said, Mary, I'll tell you who it was. It was Miss Quill. And it was Doris Kerr. And it was all those women, all those years. I never went to the altar unless there was two or three women would come and pat me on the back, even though they didn't know what I was praying for. And I knew I was in trouble and needed help. And I just, I believe every woman that ever prayed for my son came to his door.
Judge, to rest first.